Okay, so check this out. We have uh, some fun stuff with a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle right here. How do you know? Because it's got a little boxy thing there, and which indicates that this is a 90 degree angle inside the triangle. It's a right angle triangle. There was a guy named Pythagoras um, who did some work with right angle triangles, and here's what he noticed. When he made a square off of this side of the right angle triangle, and a square off of that side of a right angle triangle, he found something neat about this side, the slanted side of the right angle triangle. Check this out. Okay, so here's a little video. And so when we make a square off of each side, you end up with, come on, have a seat, relax. Okay, it'll, it'll, it'll go down. When we make a square off of this side, if this side is 3, and we make a square off of there, that means a 3 by 3 square, we have 9 squares in total. If we make a square off of this side, let's say this side is a length of 4 units, or squares, and we have a 4 by 4 square, that's 16. 9 and 16 give you 25. Wouldn't it be crazy if the number of squares on this side was 25? Well, it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is. And what we see here, the area of the squares on one side plus the area of the squares on the other side give you the area of the squares on the slanted side. And it works for every single right angle triangle, no matter how big, no matter how small. This one worked out nicely with no decimals, but sometimes it might not. Okay? So this is the Pythagorean theorem. The area of the squares of this side plus the area of the squares on that side gives you, gives you the area of the squares on the slanted side. What do they call the slanted side? The fa fancy word is the hypotenuse. Um, or, what mathematicians like to do, because this is a formula, this side plus that side equals that side. But instead of saying that, they call these sides letters. Here's what they do. So, um, again, like I just told you, the area of this square plus the area of that square equals the area of the slanted side square. Or if you rearrange it, there. That square plus that square is that square. 9 plus 16 is 25. So, they came up with letters to describe each side. They called this side here the A side. And they're saying if you take this A side and you make a square out of it, make a square out of it, that's why they call it A, uh, little two, they call it squared, right? If you take this side and you make a square out of it, A squared, take this side, which they call the B side, and make a square out of it, you square it. The C side, which is the slanted side, is what you get. The area of the squares off of an A side right angle triangle plus off of a B side right angle triangle give you the area of the squares off what they call the C side rather right angle triangle and this C side is what also known as the hypotenuse. And there is the famous formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I do a bunch of goofy things to show you, yeah, look at that. It proves when you put them together, the squares are the same. And you color them green, the squares are the same. Yeah, yeah. anyways. Any right angle triangle, this thing works. It's pretty cool, and it's pretty amazing, and a lot of math comes about from this Pythagorean theorem, which is the A side plus the B side equals the C side. Now, here's a right angle triangle. Which side is the A side? According to what I just told you in the last video, this would be the A side. So A squared, if I ever make a square off of here, I'm not going to. And then this, the bottom part, we'll call the B side. And then the C side would be the slanted side. Now if you're ever stuck and you're not sure what the C side is, like over here, when it's sideways, if you can't tell where the C side is, let me give you a little hint. 
This little boxy thing tells you where the seaside is. It always points to it. So that's the seaside. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The square of this plus the square of that, the area of those two squares, gives you the area of the square over here. Same thing with this. Now, there's the seaside there. Which is the A, which is the B? You know what? It doesn't really matter. Who cares? And adding the order doesn't matter. 5 plus 3, 3 plus 5, they both give you 8. A squared plus B squared or B squared plus A squared makes no difference. To be uh, consistent, I like this, calling this the A side, calling this the B side. That and that give you that. And that is what this magical formula is trying to tell us. Here's a question. Let's see if a right angle triangle. And we know that just that side is 4 meters, and just that side is 5 meters. Right angle triangle, what's the length of this side? Now, here's where we can write out our a squared plus b squared equals c squared formula. And if you remember, the way I like you to handle formulas is to so you know, cut down on making mistakes, is do what's called formula work answer, FWA. Write down your formula, make a little box so it's nicely organized. Then we're going to do our work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sub in these numbers into the right spots to figure out what this side is, which, by the way, is the C side. So we don't have to put a question mark there. I could put the letter C if I wanted to, because that is the C side, because the boxy thing is pointing to it. Okay. So, A side, uh, I always like to make this the A side, so 4 is going to go in here. Whatever you sub in, put in brackets, 4 squared. The, this part we'll call the B side, so 5 will go in for B. So plus 5 in for B. Whatever you sub in, put in brackets. We don't know this side, we just leave it as C squared. Next, let's do this. What is 4 squared? Did you say 8? Did you say 8? If you said 8, I want you to, um, like, uh, pinch yourself in the nose really hard, because that's not right. It's not 4 times 2, it's 4 times 4, which is 16. This is not 10, it's 25. So, 16 plus 25 will give you the area of side C, the slanted side which again I think I mentioned to you is called the hypotenuse. What is 16 plus 25? It's 41. And that is what c squared would be. But guess what? I'm not interested in what c squared is. I don't care what the square of the side is. I just want to know just what that is. So how do I get rid of this square sign? Well, an algebra tells you, you do. if you want to get rid of something, you do the opposite to get rid of it. What is the opposite of squaring something? It's the square root. So I square root this side. I do the same to the other side. This then gets rid of the square and the square root. You're just left with C. And the square root of 41. You can estimate it, but honestly, just use a calculator. Um, the square root sign is right there. Depending on your calculator, you might have to press that first, then 41, or 41, then that button. Up to you. I don't even know what this one does. Square root 41. No. So on my calculator, I have to go 41, and then square root. And it spits out this huge number. It's not huge. There's a decimal there. It's actually small. It's 6.4. Uh, let's go to two decimal places. So 6.40. It stays a zero because the number after it is less than 5. 6.40. 6.40 meters is my answer. Now, always double check, does that make sense? That this is 6.4. The slanted side is always the longer side. So, and it's not crazy longer than the other side, but yeah, it makes both sense. That makes, that sounds right. And it is. 6.4 meters is the length of that missing side there. All right, let's move on. How about this here? That side is 2, that side is 4. We don't know what the C side is. Formula work answer, people. Oh, by the way, did I label this? 
Yeah, formula is there, work is there, and then my answer would be here. So let's do this again. Formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The work, we sub in the numbers. Let's call this the a side. Again, it doesn't have to be. The a side, 2 squared, plus this we'll call right here. Come on, where's my thing? We'll call this the b side, so we'll go 4 squared there. We don't know what this is, so we'll just leave it as the unknown c squared. Now let's do the math. 2 squared is 4. 4 squared is 16, and that's c squared. Now let's add this side. 4 plus 16 is 20, equals c squared. I don't want the square, I just want plain old c. What's the opposite of squaring? Square root. Do the same to the other side, square root. So my answer is going to be the square root of 20, which, let's use a calculator, but you should be able to estimate too. Uh, 20 square root is two decimal places, 4.47. The number after it's less than 5, so it stays a 7. 4.47 is our answer. So 4, 4.47 is what C is. Does that make sense? Yeah, it should be bigger, so it is. How about this? Ooh, it's drawn a little crooked. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Write our formula out. Formula. Work. And leave some space for our answer. <clears throat> Where's the a side? Where's the b side? Where's the c side? Well, the boxy thing always tells me where the c side is. So I know that's my c side. So that's right there. Um, do you want to call this A, or do you want to call it B? Up to you. I'm going to call this A because I like to be consistent for what I do. But again, it doesn't matter about these two. So 9 will go in here. That's 9 squared. 12 will go in there. That's 12 squared. 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. Equals C squared. Uh, 81 plus 144 is 125. We don't believe we need to use a calculator. I don't want this squared. Oops, need more room. I don't want that square, so how do I get rid of it? I square root it. The opposite of squaring is a square root. That gives me just C to the same the other side. 125 square root. So I put 125 square root sign. 11.18. As we're going to two, six, uh, two decimal places. 11.18. That's meters, because the question's in meters. Um, does that make sense? Uh, why does that not make sense? Because I did a mistake. This is not 125. <laughs> this is... It's not 125. It's 225. I, should, I know I, I heard half of you yelling at the, at the computer screen when I was doing this. I, it's 225. Sorry. Uh, anyways, so, um, yeah, always double check your work is the moral of the story here. Uh, so 225, the square root of 225, let's bring out our calculator. 225 square root is 15. Nice, even 15. Does that make sense? Could that be 15 meters? Yeah. Now again, how did I check that? How did I know that I, I made that mistake? is because I looked at my answer and it was less than this. Where the C side is always longer. So uh, that allowed me to double check and realize, oh, I did make a mistake. So it's always good to do that. Example four, how about this? Oh my, what happened here? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Let's do this formula work. Where's the A side? Let's call this the A side. So we'll sub a five into here. Where's the B side? I use, well, I know this is the C side. And I already know what the C side is. It's 6. So the C side is 6 squared. The missing side is what I'm calling the B side. So let's, I'll write it like this. A squared 
which is 5 squared, and we don't know what the b side is, we'll leave it as b squared. And we know what the c side is. So what do you do? Well, don't freak out. What's 5 squared? It's 25. b squared is just b squared, just leave it. What's 6 squared? 36. Algebra, friends, algebra. How do you get the b by itself? It's being bugged by the square, which we'll handle later. But it's also being bugged by this 25. Let's get rid of this 25. Do the same to the other side. Oh, extra step here. 25s are gone. You're left with b squared. Equals 36 minus 25 is 11. What's the square root of 11? Try to do it in your head. Try, 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 try before I can get the answer. The square root of 11 is 3.32, because that rounds up, because that's a greater than 5 number. So 3.32 is our answer. B, so we square root this side, square root this side. B equals 3.32. Does that make sense here? Yeah? Because the B side is going to be less than the C side, so that's the best you can do to estimate. How about this? You've got this right angle triangle, and we don't know what this side is. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's our formula. Here comes our work. Who's the A side? I guess that? 1.5. 1.5 squared. And so if somebody start crying and you see that, hey, a calculator's going to do the work for you. Man up. Um, this we don't know. I'm calling up the B side, so what we don't know, let's leave it as B squared. This other side, boxy, boxy, boxy point, tells us that's 4 squared. Let's do the math. What is 1.5 squared? If you know that 15 squared is 225, what do you think 1.5 squared is going to be? So 1.5 squared, which I have a button right, right there that does it for me, is 2.25, which totally makes sense. 15 is 225. 1.5 will be 2.25. So that's 2.25 plus b squared equals 4 squared is 16. I want to get the b by itself. It's bugging by the this. 2.25. Subtract. 2.25. That's gone. You're left with. <coughs> we're gonna need some more room here, so go away. Um, I'm left with b squared equals 16 minus 2.25. Uh, 16 minus 2.25 is 13.75. 13.75. What am I gonna do here? I got the square. I need to get rid of it. Square root. Square root. Square root of 13.75. <coughs> 13.75 square root. Two decimal places, remember? What do you think it's going to be? 3.71 because the 8 is the number digit after it rounds up to 3.71. So B equals 3.71. What are the units? I don't want to forget their meters. Does that make sense? It's less than the C side, so yeah, that sounds like a legit answer. 3.71 meters. There you go. Here's the skill testing questions. Find the length of the missing side. So there, there, and this one here. Okay. Thanks. Bye.